Yeah, squeaky chair. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's yeah, good. that's, that's a, a good squeak. One. Oh, this is uh, your intro to this week's episode. Um, kind of uh, kind of doing some tinkering with the format. Yep, some more tinkering. Bear with us. We're Well, we'll go over it in the podcast. Yeah, you'll, but you'll hear about it. We've got, got some more modifications, a couple modifications, and uh, some new nights. That's what you got to do. Yeah. You got to keep tweaking. Yep. And yeah. we're always, we're evolving is what we're doing. We are. We're evolving. So, um, it's, uh, it's a good episode, though. We, we exchange Christmas gifts. Yeah. And uh, talk about a little bit of uh, some Black Christmas mm-hmm. action. The original and the remake. Yep. Uh, we get a little sentimental during our Christmas exchange. Yeah. And uh, we also talk about La La Land, mm-hmm. The Time Traveler's Wife, and uh, the scariest movie from my entire childhood, Don't Look Under the Bed. Yeah. So um, stick around and also make sure that uh, you stay up with us in all of our social media endeavors. Yeah. Uh, that's something I didn't talk about on the show. Since I now have found it easier to uh, switch between accounts, I'm I'm trying to do more on my my personal accounts uh-huh. as far as like just everyday silliness and whatnot. Yeah. So a transition to using the band accounts for more like news items and and you know more seriously band related right type of shit. So. Follow me personally as well. We started plugging your personal page. Yep, now we're gonna uh, plug our. We're gonna plug both our personal pages. What? What? Yeah. What were you doing? Your Instagram, right? Yeah, I was plugging my Instagram. Bender butt. Bender butt. At Bender butt. All one word. All and, lowercase. And uh, I've been using, I've been using Twitter, a bit more lately. You can track me down over on the Twitter, the Twitter Twitter. Read my tweets. He has to look up his own screen name. That's what's going on right now. Because I just started using it again. Yeah. I don't have a Twitter, guys. So if you really want to get in touch with me or follow me or see what I'm up to, you have to follow me on Instagram. Yep. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. I'm at Nicholas Villars. That's easy. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So follow me on Twitter. Um, I do fun things. And... um, band stuff of course we're on facebook facebook.com slash super divorce uh you got uh instagram at super divorce band our twitter is just at super divorce and uh then our dot com yep super divorce me.com uh you can also email us at divorce club at super divorce me.com um I assume we still haven't heard from anybody. No, nope, not yet. So still waiting on that. Yeah. Very special first email. Uh, I want to throw out there, you know, being on Instagram, I uh, would love to get some feedback if anybody would want to watch us live record the podcast because uh, Instagram has a feature. I, I don't know if you've seen. You can, much like Facebook, you can start a live cast or a live showing or a mm-hmm. live whatever and uh kind of like periscope kind of like exactly like periscope except you know it's on instagram and that it notifies your followers so mm. we've got like 236 followers on instagram or some shit like that uh so somehow let us know if you guys would be interested in tuning in live with us um or on facebook you know let us know if you'd want us to start streaming on facebook but uh, I have, you know, I've talked about Cavity Colors a lot. Yeah. My favorite little clothing, horror clothing company. Well, uh, he's been going live oh. a lot. His name's Aaron. And uh, I try to tune in whenever he's live. And it's really cool. You just get to chat. And, you know, I've asked him a couple things. And he always answers me. And it makes me feel really special. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's it's cool. It's really cool. It's we'll fun. answer you guys. Yeah, absolutely. So let us know if you want us to go live. Maybe uh, next week we'll give it a shot. See yeah. if anybody tunes in. 
But I tried to do it today, and my phone was taking forever. And oh. The connection was weird or something. I don't know. Oh. But we'll figure it out. And we'll do it next week. So uh, enjoy the show. Yes. Enjoy. See you in the outro. See ya. We are not getting a divorce. We are not getting a divorce. We are not getting a divorce. Welcome to the Super Divorce Supercast. I am Nicholas. I'm Bender. And uh, today is a nice holiday episode. Yeah, it's basically Christmas for us, even though it's Thursday. And we're still going to start off with a nice beer me. Beer me! Drinking, drinking some good old Samuel Adams Boston Lager. An old standby. Yeah, old, good old standby today. Can't go wrong with this one. Mm-hmm. Mm. There we go. It's a good beer. Well, Bender and I are going to uh, exchange our Christmas gifts here. Yeah. On the show. On the show. It's going to be awesome. And uh, should we start with it? I don't know. Should we? Well, well, well how about, how about we... we put that off for just a little bit just, just a little bit We're yeah just a little bit Let's... make the kids wait to open the presents <laughs> yeah make the kids wait <laughs> until i eat we gotta have breakfast <laughs> first <laughs> but uh what what have you been up to i haven't really oh let's see well uh since we recorded last when uh, even was that was that last tuesday or something yeah i think so because we recorded on like tuesday and then put the show out on thursday it's yeah. new night yeah, brand new night. Yeah, and then we have what well, we did have we have a big discussion about what's going on. Yeah, with us, and that's kind of important with the band. Yeah, but as far as what I've been up to, last Thursday evening, Jess and I went out to Indianapolis. Oh yeah, to see a movie. Yeah, she told me about that. What did you see? La La Land. I had a feeling that was going to be it. Yeah, but uh, she told me that. You wanted to see it because Kojima said it was the best movie he's seen all year. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's all I needed to hear to yeah. like sell me on it. And so it was like, we got to go see this movie. I didn't even look anything up about it. Uh-huh. I just I knew it was a musical, okay. which I'm not usually into. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, if Hideo Kojima is calling this the best movie of the year, I'll go and check it out. Yeah. And I'm very glad I did. Really? I, yeah, it's no joke. I don't know where it falls, but I would put it in my top ten movies of all time. Really? Yeah. Is that good? That's pretty cool. I actually, uh, just last night, we had, like, a Christmas Hanukkah, Christmas Hanukkah dinner Mm -hmm. at my parents' house, and my mom was talking about La La Land and how she wanted to see it, and they were going to have, like, a girls' night and go out and see... La la la. You should. Yeah. And be prepared to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I, I like, I was trying to hold it together because the theater was packed. Uh huh. I mean, it was like, it's been released very sparsely throughout the U.S. Yeah. But it's like breaking records for this type of release. Uh huh. And so, we saw it on like a special pre-release night, and. Um, you know, I didn't expect that many people to be there, but I mean, it was like full. I didn't, when we walked in, we were just like, we were a few minutes late. And, um, when we walked into the theater, th- I thought we were going to end up sitting on the floor. Really? Cause that's how crowded it was. Okay. So we like walked up, you know, all the way up to the top and there was like nothing. So we ended up finding two seats in the very front that we had to, Ugh. but it's so terrible. I know we, Lindsay and I went to see Rogue One the other night, and we walked into the theater, and uh, we were like, you know, two for Rogue One, and the lady was like, which showing? And they had two theaters showing it in 3D, Mm -hmm. and then, like, two theaters showing it in, like, uh, whatever, like, digital XD or something Mm -hmm. like that. And then one theater showing it, like, standard or something mm-hmm. like that. So, like, five fucking theaters showing this movie, right? And we walk up and we're like, you know, Rogue One, and they're like, which showing? And I was like, well, isn't there a showing for, like, seven fifty five? Mm-hmm. And she was like, yeah, but it's pretty much down to just the front row. Because you pick your seats at this theater. Yeah. 
because they have recliners and whatnot. Mm-hmm. She was like, it's down to the front row, and she was like, pretty much every showing for the rest of the night is down to the front row, and we were just like, see ya, <laughs> like, not even gonna fuck it. with it, nope, I was like, I want to see this movie so fucking bad, but no way am I sitting in the front row to watch it, like, I don't think any movie is worth sitting that fucking close to a huge ass screen. Well, the good thing about the theater we went to, it was like an art cinema, Really? So it wasn't like an IMAX screen that you were right. You know, six inches away from. Was it a it was, was it a smaller screen? Like, I mean, it wasn't like. Have you been to the small theaters over at the Lebanon Cinema? Yeah, I think so. It, it they were bigger than those, but right. still not as big as like what I would, I guess you would call like a standard right. movie screen, somewhere in the middle. Uh huh. You know. So. Would you would you consider it similar to like the Dollar Theater or bigger than that, like nicer than that? Like the the, the decor de- uh-huh. and whatnot was nicer, but as far as the size of the screen, probably about that size. Okay, because I feel like at the Dollar Theater, the screen is pretty far away from the front row. Yeah, that was another thing. It, like you weren't right up there. Right. There was a little bit of walking space, uh-huh. you know. So I guess it it wouldn't be too bad in a theater like that, but yeah, yeah. for for Rogue One, I was just like not not gonna fuck yeah. with it. I don't. I think. <coughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that. Did we get stuck in the front or near the front when we saw? Oh um, yeah, yeah. When we saw Force seven. Awakens, yeah. we were uh, third row from the front there were like two rows in front of us and we had to watch it in 3d that close yeah that was abysmal yeah so <laughs> awesome though it was it was it was awesome but man i i remember loving it the first time we watched it but i very quickly went back with my parents mm-hmm. and saw it in regular definition and we sat in the back mm-hmm. and i was just like okay this movie is awesome i I really want to see Rogue One because I hear great things about it, but, like, I think maybe you feel this way. With the movies that aren't, like, episode, insert number, it doesn't seem like it's urgent to be there on, like, opening night. Right, no, I me. agree. I, uh, I'm definitely more excited for Rogue One than I was for Force Awakens, mm-hmm. and I have been hearing that it just, like, is so much better than even Force Awakens. Really? Yeah, and that it's, like... I've heard some people say it's the best Star Wars movie, like, yet, and I've heard some people say it's, like, the second best after Empire now. Mm -hmm. Um, I've heard so many people say that the last ten minutes, like, change your life. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine who said that a couple of her guy friends, like, cried while they were there, Mm. and, like, it's being hyped up a lot, and I'm a little worried about that, but... Uh, so far, I'm not. I haven't seen any spoilers, so that's good. But I'm starting to get worried. Yeah. Now I'm now I'm starting to worry that people are going to start saying things online. Well, you probably need to get to it. I know. Um, maybe. Unfortunately, with the holiday weekend, you know, maybe mm-hmm. I'll hit it. Be able to hit it next Wednesday or something when yeah. when I'm off. We're gonna go see La La Land again next week. Yeah. Yeah, it's playing at the Neon. Oh, I'd be down for that. Starting, I think starting on Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. It's playing through the 29th. So, movies never stay there for very long. Yeah. But. I'd be I'd be down to go. I'm sure Lindsay would want to. But yeah, you would, you'll probably cry if you watch <laughs> The it only first. movie that has ever made me cry is <laughs> The Time Traveler's Wife. I've never seen that. It's got uh, Rachel McAdams, because it's a chick flick, mm-hmm. and Eric Bana. And he plays, Eric Bana plays a time traveler, Mm -hmm. but he can't control his powers. So he just kind of like will disappear and then he's gone. And so like basically he like shows up in a forest and he kind of walks out and he's always, he's always naked too. Mm -hmm. So he like walks out of this forest and there's, like, a little girl, and he's like, hey, get me some clothes. So she, like, runs and gets him clothes. And then that little girl grows up to be, like, Rachel McAdams. 
and he sort of keeps falling back in time mm -hmm. and meeting her at different points in her life and they eventually like fall in love and they get married and they like have a family and stuff or they, they try to um, and it's just it's really good and then it's super fucking sad but it's also really like heartwarming and crazy like the mm -hmm. end of it you're just like holy fuck how tragically romantic mm -hmm. you know so good Lindsay won't watch it with me and it's the only movie that I've ever cried at mm. and it's the only chick flick that I really kind of stand by I yeah. think the only real generic <clears throat> chick flick cause I don't like the notebook I never saw that it's mm. it's nothing to write home about speaking of things like popping out of existence have you heard about this thing with like the Sinbad genie movie did you ever hear about that? No. I don't think I've ever seen it. Do you recall one? I remember Shaq playing... Kazam. Kazam, yeah, mm -hmm. but I don't know about the Sinbad Genie movie. Okay, well, apparently, like, a lot of people have memories, like, very vivid memories of there being a Sinbad Genie movie that was made in the 90s. Okay. Like, before Kazam came out. <laughs> and... Long story short, there wasn't. At but all. but there are like thousands of people who swear it existed and they remember like seeing it at the video store. I was reading about it yesterday and there was like, you know, some various testimonials. One guy was talking about like how he ran a video store in the 90s and he remembers ordering two copies of it <laughs> and like having to watch them because the family <clears throat> one of the tapes kept getting returned. Is like something was wrong with it. Uh -huh. And he's like, so I remember watching it. And he was like describing scenes from it. And and like all these people are convinced it was there. Uh -huh. And so there are all these insane theories about like, you know, did, was there a quantum shift where some people were like in an alternate timeline oh where this movie was real. And then they somehow like jumped dimensions into a place where it never happened. And like... It's weird because when I read about it, if you would have asked me yesterday, hey, remember that Sinbad Genie movie? I probably would have said, yeah, I remember that. I never saw it, but I remember seeing <laughs> I swear, I, I have, like, it makes sense to me. Uh -huh. I'm not, like, a truther on it, though. Right. I feel like it has to be something with maybe another movie he was in where he kind of looked like a genie. I know he was in, like, a pirate movie. And yeah, he played. Didn't he play Sinbad the pirate? I don't know if he ever actually played Sinbad. Sinbad played Sinbad. Maybe he did. I don't know. I kind of thought maybe. But I feel like maybe, maybe there's like, just this random inclination, that, from people you know that were growing up at that time to associate that movie with like the Shack movie. Uh huh. Because they're both like shitty '90s horrible, whatever family comedies. Yeah. You know, so they could bleed together pretty easily in your mind. I Especially if you never actually watched it. Yeah. You just kind of have a, a slight recollection of something like that. Right. You know what? What I remember most movie-wise about the 90s, because we watched, my sisters and I watched a lot of Disney mm -hmm. what, growing up. So I remember the Disney Channel original movies mm -hmm. most of all. And... It's a shame because I think a lot of those were really, really good for kids. Yeah. And they're just lost to time. Yeah. Like you. Until I'm, there's like a collection or, you yeah. know, they put them on Netflix. But or, I mean, like, so many people love, like, Halloween Town. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I remember uh, Up, Up, and Away about this. Uh, it was a family of. Uh, black superheroes mm -hmm. and you are supposed to get your powers when you like turn 13 and the one son turn is 13 like the movie opens on his birthday or whatever mm -hmm. and he doesn't get powers but like his little sister has powers his big brother has powers his parents are like well-known superheroes and everything and there's like a buttload of other superheroes but then like even though he's normal he ends up stopping this like digital terrorism mm -hmm. where like this dude this group of people have a computer program 
and they're giving it to kids on floppy disk in classrooms and it's supposed to like teach them how to recycle yeah. but they go home and pop it in and it brainwashes them to like steal money from their parents <laughs> and then they like take all the money to these people and and their weakness is aluminum foil hmm. but uh the the probably the best one Besides Brink, because that movie was awesome. Did you ever watch Brink? I don't think so. It was about rollerblading. I don't think I ever saw that one. It was good. (laughs) It was good. But there was this terrible, terrible, scary movie called Don't Look Under the Bed. And it was about the boogeyman. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the movie, there's like the main girl and then her little brother. And... uh, the little brother has an imaginary friend. But I think the sister and brother can both see this imaginary friend. Yeah. Well, as the while the, the little boy is growing up, so he starts to stop believing in his friend. And when that happens, um, if you stop believing in your imaginary friend, they turn into the boogeyman. And the boogeyman design and, like, the... Uh, it's, like, literally, like, a body horror film. I mean, yeah. his imaginary friend, like, slowly is transforming into the boogeyman. And it's fucking terrifying. <laughs> like, so fucking scary. And I remember watching it on vacation as a little kid. And just, like, we, we rented out. We were supposed to go camping with, like, my mom's whole family. And it rained, like, all weekend. So we ended up renting two cabins. And stayed in the cabin, so we had TVs, and it was, like, the premiere, and we watched it, and I had nightmares for, like, a week. What was it called? Don't Look Under the Bed? Don't Look Under the Bed. And I'm pretty sure you can... I'm pretty sure, honestly, though, you can rent these on Amazon. Mm Mm-hmm. I just, like, don't want to spend $1.99 on an hour-long Disney Channel original movie. Have you just looked on YouTube? No, I haven't done that. But it was on there. it know. was scary as fuck, <laughs> like so scary, so much so that I wish that I had it on DVD. <laughs> Maybe uh, Arrow will do a release. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? I saw that Arrow did a release of The Burbs in the UK. Did they? Yeah, like it's recently, like, or it's just they just have they just it. have one. Yeah, it's like man, that's like one of my favorite movies ever. I've not I seen love The Burbs. That. God, I've so heard good. about it. Great movie. Uh, when I was in Massachusetts for that tattoo um, event, mm-hmm. uh, one of the artists that I that I actually want to get tattooed by collabed on a Burbs piece. Uh, this girl has a whole thigh piece of of uh, the the redneck, I guess. He had like a red a beard, red oh, beard. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, something about a squirrel, mm-hmm. like whatever. So he has like the squirrel and the house and the. And it's a whole thigh piece That's from the burbs. Cool. But. <laughs> well. Uh, do you want. Have we kept the children waiting long enough? Well. It, I don't know. We can get the business out of the way. Yeah. Here we, real quick. we can get the business. Um, I guess. The most. Uh, apparent thing right away. Is that we are going to be. Transitioning our video shows into segments here on the Supercast. Yes. And that was something that Bender and I talked about last week. You know, I was, uh, we'd actually recorded footage for Star Wars, um, Air of the Empire for Super Fanatics. And we also recorded footage for Jack Frost for Super Scary. Yeah. Which, I don't know, maybe because I have this, maybe I'll throw a little something together i don't know it's just i was uh i realized that like in all the the time that i was working on band stuff it was it seemed like because the videos that we were releasing um were getting better and then i therefore wanted to continue improving them any way that i could i found i was spending more time on them than i was in the beginning yeah and so it was leaving me with basically no time to work on music which is a problem mm-hmm. if we're a band we kind of need that so yeah. Yeah. um you know that's that's the long and short of it is just they were becoming 
very time consuming to put together, especially like with with the uh, with Super Fanatics. When it first started, I was taking pictures with my phone. Then I started using the scanner on my computer because the quality was much better, you know. And then I found out that I could scan them in at a higher quality, which make makes the uh, scans take longer. Uh -huh. So as you can hear, it's like, you know, we're not the type of guys who want to just put out uh, garbage. Not that our right. shows were garbage, no. but if there was a way to improve things and I saw it, I was like, yeah, we should do that to make these as good as they can possibly be. And that's where there was kind of the conflict where it's like, okay, it's going to have to kind of be one or the other at the moment anyhow you know maybe yeah down the road when we get some time freed up who knows maybe we'll, we'll bring them back in a video form or like release one every now and then for special occasions but the weekly thing was was getting a bit intense it's kind of i mean i and i you know we talked about it i completely am like on board i think the music needs to be i mean first yeah you know first priority but you know, I am I'm a little bummed yeah. because I think were we not a band, mm -hmm. we we really had a good thing going. Yeah, we had real. You know, you were always improving. The quality was getting much better, um, and it was just fun. You know, it, it was. was. And another thing is, I feel like we we started going more in depth. Yeah, and the shows were getting longer as well. On top of all that, yeah. So it was just like one thing after another. It made me realize, like, if we wanted to do that, like you said, if we weren't a band, we probably could. We, yeah. well, there's no probably about it. We could. We would absolutely. Throw, that's what we would do. That's what we would do if we didn't have a, a music project going on. And you know, in the beginning, those were just supposed to be like little side pieces, like to promote the band. Yeah. Since we weren't really active on the musical end of things at that point, you know, over the summer. It's like, what else can we do to kind of keep ourselves in, you know, in people's uh, field of vision right. so that they don't totally forget about us? And I feel like it, it, it's done a good job, you know, because if you look at our, uh, any of our social media accounts, our website, you see that we've been active. We've been working on stuff. Yeah. Even if it hasn't been the music, which, you know, that's, it's cool to see that we didn't just waste sit our back. time. Yeah. So. Well, you know, I was thinking maybe, maybe sometime in the future, I don't have the equipment for it now, mm -hmm. but, you know, maybe we'll get to a point where I have the equipment yeah. to edit mm -hmm. and we're able to begin shooting, maybe not weekly, but yeah. maybe twice a month. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to re release videos, and I can edit them yeah. together because you know while you work on music because you're obviously the chief, you're the chief on music. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be there and help create, and I'm yeah. going to create myself as well. But you know, hopefully there will come a time when we're able to continue releasing video shows, mm -hmm. um, at least about release uh, Super Scary and Super Fanatics episodes. Yeah. Video shows aren't dead, though. That's right. Because we are going to uh, begin documenting our journey here. Yes. In the creation of this next album that we're going to be working on. Yes. And, uh... So, instead, unfortunately... Well, fortunately and unfortunately, instead of getting your Super Scary and Super Fanatics, we are basically going to start uh the super vlog yeah and uh and like nick said we are here soon um we are going to go full-on music and uh we're going to document that that experience and that journey and you know i would encourage anybody out there listening that watches our shows regularly as well you know i would encourage you to like stay tuned you know and keep watching because we are going to be documenting a completely raw creative experience like both of us are entering into a genre of music that neither of us is familiar with at least creative wise right. we both are fans mm -hmm. of what we're going to be doing but neither one of us has ever created this kind of music before 
and you know even now as i sit here i still have like never touched a synth Mm -hmm. you know so this is going to be literally you'll you'll get to watch us develop from the ground up on what we're doing and how this new album is going to come about and eventually if you keep watching the shows you'll end up in the studio with us and you know hopefully one day you'll end up at shows with us and you'll end up you know, God willing, on tour with us mm-hmm. and stuff like that, and and you know that's where that's where we're gonna go with this this vlog. And we've talked about doing a uh, special edition release of our album when the time comes, and uh, we're gonna compile all of these. I would assume probably like fifteen minute videos ish, considering mm-hmm. that's what we have <laughs> time for on yeah. our memory card. Yeah, just I guess whatever good footage we get in yeah. a given week you know when yeah. we get together and you know we'll we'll compile it uh you know for each video but then on our cd release we are going to compile it all into a documentary about our journey and this new adventure that we are going to be starting i mean we've already started one with the shows in general and now we're literally going to be taking a fresh step on a more direct path to music because as I'm pretty sure we've told you guys, but we have studio time scheduled. Yeah, we're already booked. I mean, it's it's on the calendar yeah, for us and for the studio. We're, so. we're going to the studio. We are going to make you new music, and it is going to come in 2017. Like, just period. That's yeah. going to happen. So, yep, it's uh, we're we're heading to Random Awesome Studios in uh, Michigan with Josh Schroeder again, who did. Uh, the Sleep Star album. Yeah. I love what you've done with the place. Mm-hmm. And you did an awesome job on that. And it was a lot of fun to work with him. Amazing production, um, lackluster album. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible, but but the production is really, really good. And Josh was really great to work with. I mean, if you guys have any sense of our personalities and who we are as as people and as friends, Josh is just like us period yeah so it's it's gonna be awesome um but yeah we're we're heading up there in june and we'll be recording for a month so really uh really exciting times and you know there's a lot of work to do yep so kind of uh surveying all that is what led to our decision and you know you'll get your your super scary we're still gonna i think we'll we'll still kind of stick with the same general setup i don't know if we'll um i mean we have a little more freedom doing uh those type of uh discussions on the podcast yeah you know um i think uh i think what what will kind of come of it is um well if you guys watched the silent night deadly night video which i i will it was our last video i guess mm-hmm. Um, we were just starting to adopt a new format where we kind of give you an overview of the whole movie with all footage. Like you, you didn't see us at all. Uh, and then towards the end, uh, once we finished the plot or got to a point where we didn't want to spoil it, um, you, you know, you camera came to us and we kind of gave you a couple facts and some impressions and things like that of the movie. Um, I think... Doing it on the podcast, at least if I had my way, we'd kind of give a, a more general overview of the plot, but I think it'll be easier to sort of go over what happens, but then be like, oh, I really liked this part, and here's why, you yeah. know? I, yeah, I, I would still like to do an overview. Yeah. Maybe not as long, um, but one good thing about just talking about stuff that happens in the movie i i think we should still stick with the format of trying to spoil as little as possible Agreed. but it gives us an opportunity to be like hey there's this really cool death scene yes. and this happens and you can kind of talk about it a little bit without revealing any of the characters um or spoiling what it actually looks like on screen right so on the video show if you brought up a, a death sequence or you know something cool that happens in the movie and you don't show it, it kind of feels like, you know, part of it's missing. Yeah. You know, yeah. and if you show it, then you kind of spill the beans and 
give people less incentive to actually go out and watch it for themselves, which is why we talk about this, these things. Right. So, yeah, you'll you'll still you'll still get your you'll get your fix all at, here on the podcast. So uh, we'll be picking a movie to talk about. Yep. You know, and kind of uh, same general setup because it, that that still keeps us focused, mm-hmm. and I, I think it's easier to to kind of take something away from that type of discussion. Yeah. As opposed to just like here's our horror section of the podcast where it's just like whatever comes to mind right yeah no we'll still be watching we'll still be watching movies because i want to keep doing that to encourage myself to continue buying movies yeah that's part of it um but so today maybe after maybe after our gifts or something we'll maybe we can do a little bit of a something on jack frost and maybe we'll go into air the air to the empire a little bit yeah um and then We'll have to kind of play catch up, but maybe next week we'll go over Black Christmas Mm -hmm. because that was actually slated for uh, this Saturday as a video show. I feel like I I still, now that you've seen it, Uh I want to talk about it. Well, we can, I mean, we can do that too. We can just cram it all in. Yeah. I mean, this podcast can be two hours long. It can be. There's, There's no, we don't have any fucking time limit here. No. But speaking of Christmas, maybe that's a good segue into our our little gift exchange. Yeah, here. Christmas gift giving. Yeah. Um, okay. First, you got to start with cards, right? Well, I didn't get you a card. It's okay, okay. If, you, if you didn't. <laughs> I usually I usually don't do cards, but I I got everyone cards this year. Really? I was out and I was uh, walking around uh, Kroger and. Stopped in the card section. Was like, I'm gonna get everyone a card this year. <laughs> so I did. And I came home and I, I wrote them all out and licked them up. Well, and, that's uh, nice. Here you go. How nice is Nice that? and sealed. Thank you. There you go. It says uh, so. Nick just handed me my card. It's a white envelope and it says Brendel on the front of it. <laughs> Makes me think of uh, what's his name? Isn't it Seth Brundle from uh, The Fly? Is that his name? I think it is. I know he's Dr. Brundle. Mm. Brundle Fly. <laughs> I've been trying to get Lindsay to watch The Fly. We need to do that on Super Scary so that I have to watch it. She won't. Then, does she not want to? It's not that she doesn't want to. It's just like, she. Just, mm. what do you want to watch? And, oh, RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh. <laughs> so I've opened my card here. I guess we'll just describe it because we're not going to show it or yeah. anything. Uh, it's got... It's got C-3PO and R2-D2 and BB-8 on the front. It says Galactic Greetings with sort of uh, red and white hyperspace with yeah. lots of glitter. So you know I'm into the glitter. When you open it up, it's got the Millennium Falcon inside. And it says, hope your holidays are out of this world just like you. Should I read the inscription? Is it yeah. going to be sentimental? Go for it. So right under that, uh, Nick's got an inscription in... He's got an arrow between the the just and the like and just like you. And it says, yes, just like you. You are an out-of-this-world guy, a trusted friend, a confidant, a true soldier. I'm lucky to have a ride-or-die like you in my life. With our powers combined and as we are animated and energized by the spirit of Christmas trees, we will do wonderful things in this world of Christmas. Happy Christmas to you and your crew, Nuka. 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 Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. But not that. Yeah. And then it says, "Love you, bro. Too sweet me, Christmas Hootski." <laughs> 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 Nicholas Randall Villars the third. And then on the opposite side of the card, it says. I hope you like this Star Wars card I made at Skywalker's Road. <laughs> George Lucas. And then it has a wonderful, a wonderful Nick Villar's drawing of the man himself, George Lucas. And he's given me a thumbs up with his right hand and he's got frostbite on his left hand. Because <laughs> it's cold. It's Christmas time at Skywalker Road. Yeah, Christmas time on Skywalker Road. And it's actually, if you read a little more closely... Uh, his name, George Lunkus. 
What a wonderful card that's going on the refrigerator for sure. Yeah. For sure. <clears throat> okay, so I've I have two things to open. Yes, you do. Oh boy. And I am I'm debating so hard which one for you to open first. Okay. Um but I think we're going to go with this one first. Mm -hmm. And uh if you don't understand what it is, You'll you'll kind of get it when you open the second one, and then I'll explain. Okay. So there's your there's your first one there. All right. I've uh, this is a a rectangular package. Um, it feels fairly heavy, maybe between five and ten pounds. Um, and uh, it's got some nice wrapping paper, red with um, many circles. Uh, some green and red and some uh, some blue and white. Some nice polka dots, if you polka will. Polka dotties. And I'm going to begin opening this. Let's see what we got here. This is a package containing. Two picture frames, and um, these have uh, stands on the back of them, and it looks like uh, they uh, they stand vertically. Yeah. And you have uh, little. Uh, I would say you got three um, segments on each picture frame, and uh, it looks like you could hold like three classic photographs that you might have taken with uh, your old Polar, or not Polaroid, but your Kodak camera. Yeah, some nice 4x6s. Okay, is that, what, is that yeah, the standard They're 4x6, yeah. Okay, okay, 4x6. So you get room for three 4x6 photographs in each frame here. Nice uh, kind of cherry oak coloring. Well, I mean, it's from Walmart, <laughs> so it's probably cherry oak plastic. But. Well, I, I said cherry oak coloring. Oh, okay, there you go, there you so go. It's, Maybe not cherry oak wood, but it sounds kind of like wood, and yeah. uh, it's nice and heavy. Yeah, they're good. They're so I'm going to set those there. Do those do those images look familiar to you at all? Oh, wait. Hold on. Let me... you gotta, you got to examine oh, the images. You, good thing you said that, because I just... Uh, yes, they do look familiar. These are images. Wow. You know what? You know what's cool about this? What's that? I, I looked right over the images in the picture frame uh -huh. because it, it looked like the professional kind of stock drawings you would have gotten with the frame. Oh, stuff. yeah? Yeah. Like, I, I was just looking at a glance. I was like, oh, okay, those are those are the pictures included. <laughs> <laughs> and I just saw, like, the, the, the outlines, you know, yeah. very quickly looking without realizing that in each uh, in each space for a photograph is a drawing representing something from the mutilator that's right you're right so um, yeah so because because you guessed yeah these are hand-drawn storyboard cards directly from the production of the mutilator Wow they're really? all stamped on the back with property of the mutilator, and you can't see it in the frame, but each one is numbered on which scene it is up here in the up here in the right hand corner. Well, holy shit, man, that's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, those are those are all hand drawn. Where'd you get these? Well, open your next gift. Okay. And I will elaborate. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, so here we have, um, <clears throat> this feels like another picture frame. It is another picture frame. It feels like uh, there's maybe room for one large photo it's in this one. Most likely one large photo. One large photo. If you're trying to get a visual here, just um, I'm just feeling it out here. It feels like... A frame you might have uh, put your senior picture in and, yeah. and hung in the hallway. Yeah, it's a little larger. Okay. I'll open this one. Oh, wow. So this is... We've got 
This is a fall break, okay, so it has the original title artwork, right? Yeah. This is a fall break brochure that was passed out at the Cannes Film Festival. And if you'll notice here, it is signed by Buddy Cooper because I bought these directly from Mr. Buddy Cooper. Wow. That is amazing. Mr. Cooper keeps an Instagram account where he sells mutilator merchandise uh, and screen-used props and uh, behind-the-scenes photos and film. You can buy the entire film on reel from, from him himself. And what you do is you message him on Facebook and you place an order and then he sends you stuff. So there's not even like an automated store. You just have to message Buddy Cooper. Yeah, and you're like, hey man, I want to order this and this. And then he sends you a PayPal invoice and you pay him and then wow. he sends you stuff. That is awesome. So I found this when I was trying to figure out where Buddy Cooper lived, right? Mm -hmm. I was looking up his address and it directed me to the, to the Facebook, which directed me to the Instagram. And now, the reason I got these for you, not only are they, like, fucking sweet, yeah. because they are, mm -hmm. but sentimentally, I feel like all throughout Super Scary, The Mutilator has kind of been the one film that you and I, not, like, I mean, we've really bonded over this film. Yeah. Because... We discovered it together, mm -hmm. and it's it was a blind buy, you know, and we mm -hmm. both, you know, enjoyed the film and then enjoyed it so much more watching the documentary about yeah. it on the era release. And just, it's just kind of like having that camaraderie with yeah. you and like, hell yeah, like this is our thing, you know, it's, yeah, that's, it's super cool. So I found, awesome. found all this stuff for you. That is really really awesome and not Barry. to give it away too much but buddy cooper sells this stuff for dirt cheap does he <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's gonna be sold out soon the entire film on four canisters four film reels is like two hundred dollars jeez yeah man that is really cool this is uh so is this in the documentary in the mutilator documentary they talk about how they had an original well, when the title was still Fall Break, right? They had uh, the original artwork for the movie poster that that they had, you know, drawn up before the movie got widespread distribution. That they basically said, "No, that's shitty. Yeah, we're gonna make new poster poster art for you." This is the original, then I would assume. Yeah, that is the original poster this art would be before what, they changed it to the Mutilator. What the what the suits said? No, you got to get rid of that. Yeah. Over. Yeah. I, I like it. Uh, yeah, it's cool. I think it's pretty cool. That's really fucking cool, man. But I didn't know, also, that it was going to come signed. And I wasn't sure exactly who I was dealing with, mm -hmm. or like, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then that showed up with his signature on it, and I was like, I'm just messaging Buddy Cooper. Yeah. Like, it's no big deal. That's like, awesome. So, I actually got uh, six storyboard cards for myself, too. Did you? Yeah. Were they different? Or the... They are different. Are they? He has the the post, the uh, page on his Instagram, or the post on his Instagram, is uh, just a box, just full of them. I mean, I believe the bridge scene right there mm -hmm. is, like, in the thousands uh, wow. numbered. So, you it was like... I mean, it was like you got 12 of them for, like, $3. I mean, it was, just, it was just crazy. Yeah. And like I said, they're all stamped on the back with, like, property of the mutilator, and it says, like, scene number and all kinds of all kinds of stuff. And these are the originals. Yeah, those are original hand-drawn. That is so cool. Man. That is very thoughtful. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. And I, I agree with you, um... You know, something else I was thinking about, uh, as far as Super Scary in particular, I think, was, um, you know, you've, we've been in this band together and, you know, uh, Sleep Star for several years now. Yeah. You know, but, uh, but I feel like doing these shows together, if nothing else... It's allowed us to hang out more, you know, and, and kind of become 
better bros yeah. throughout the whole thing. So no, it's, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And Yeah, that's, that's definitely part of it. I mean, I feel like, you know, from, from the moment... <laughs> let's get sentimental, people. <laughs> from the moment that, like, we hung out for the first time, and it was at your wife's shop, yeah. and we were painting mm-hmm. the walls, and we had only spoken... Uh, probably once before, and it was when Jesse had called me to see if I wanted to try out for the band, and then you immediately started messaging me on Facebook, and I was Mm -hmm. trying to talk to both of you at the same time. Yeah. But, uh, so, so the first time we met, we were actually, it was just the two of us as well, but, uh, you came to the shop, and, uh, we, we were painting together. And just sort of got to know each other and stuff. And, you know, oh, you like Star Wars, and do you like this, and do you like Metallica? And, mm-hmm. you know, we talked about all kinds of stuff. And, you know, I think I think ever since then, I have really, obviously, I've, I've felt a very strong connection to you as a friend. And then, you know, joining the band... And meeting Bob and Zach Madden at the time, like, it was just, you know, it's a great experience. And, you know, even all the experiences that we've had and the member changes that we've had, like, I've never hated anybody, really. You know, I, you know, I had issues with certain people, but all through, through it all, though, through it all and through everything that's happened over the last, I guess, three years now, you know, you and I, I think, have progressively gotten closer and closer and especially now Mm -hmm. with only being the two of us in this band and then also doing these shows like you said it's you know i you you really are like you're like you're my best friend or one of my very very best friends and you know i've always really thought of you as like an older brother you know even though you're you're only what like four or five years older than me yeah it's nothing crazy, but yeah. still, like, you know, and even you and Jesse, like, you you guys are, like, role models to me, you know what I mean? Well, thank you. So. Yeah. Yeah, man, and, you know, I, that's why it's, it's going to be, it'll still be cool even doing Super Scary and Super Fanatics on the podcast, because I feel like part of, part of what's, you know been the bonding element in those shows is not just like the fact they're video shows but it's like that we're that we're consciously deciding that we're both going to check out this thing this yeah. week and then we get to talk about it yeah you know and 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 connect over it which is like the essence and the magic of of fandom in my opinion yeah it's really cool to watch something and be blown away by it but i think that the most fun that you have as a fan of this or that thing is when you meet other fans and you can talk about it and yeah. you know and share your likes and dislikes and have your back and forth and your arguments about which character is more powerful or mm-hmm. which character is better you know and and so far you know it's been so great because watching these movies you know if if we both pick something up and watch something for the very first time the mutilator mm mm-hmm. mhm we're both blown away by the same things and like knowing that about each other and being able to bond over that the black christmas re or not the remake definitely (laughs) not the remake Uh. but the original black christmas which you know we'll hopefully we'll talk about soon yeah watching that for the first time both of us and just being like holy shit Mm -hmm. this movie's awesome and like we both know it that you know to be able to to consistently over what like almost 15 episodes yeah like and dislike just about all of the exact same stuff Mm -hmm. is just like you know it's fun we're best friends yeah (laughs) (laughs) like that's the definition of what best friends do yeah so it's been it's been really great and i i wanted to commemorate that well that's that's extremely thoughtful and that's awesome, and I'm glad you pointed out before I just said that. I was like, God, I oh, was, just some picture uh, frames. Why, well, I, I, when you said that they would, you know, 
I would understand the frames more by the second gift. Uh-huh. I assumed maybe there were going to be pictures oh, yeah. in the second one that I would then put in the frame without realizing, no, that's that's what's in there. Those are very special things that yeah. I'll just throw <laughs> without looking. <laughs> it only took me like a second when I glanced back, yeah. you know, and saw what was going on. So that's, yeah, that's really cool. I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but that bridge scene as well mm-hmm. might have been from uh, the scene that was cut from the movie. Yeah, I was thinking that because I remember him talking about that in the, uh, the yep. documentary. And it's... a lot of this, these three in in this frame with the that um, killer catching that big Ed catching the axe there, yeah. and then the axe going through the window, and then uh, gosh, I can't remember the name, little Ed and uh, Pam, mm-hmm. like you know, arm in arm like that. Yeah, these are these are pretty close in number. Like almost, it's almost a complete sequence. They're probably only one or two apart, like number wise. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's, you're only missing like one or two cards in between those those cards. That's, I mean, that's an awesome find. Just as like a, a horror fan. I know it's you know? so great. I mean, I'm telling you this. This Instagram account, you can buy screen used clothing items, and you can buy full sized like. I think the biggest frame, you know, you can find at, like, Walmart is, like, 24 by 36, you know, mm-hmm. and that's your, like, movie poster size. I'm talking, like, like 30 by 41 mm-hmm. posters of Fall Break and The Mutilator, both artworks, like, original movie posters. Uh, I, I mean, like I said, behind-the-scenes slide, mm-hmm. slide reels, like, you would need a projector to view them on a camera. It's... Did uh, super awesome. Did the Arrow release have this like as the alternate cover art? Yeah, you can flip it around. Okay, and it's fall break cover. That's cool. That's really neat. Well, I guess you can open up your gift here. Yeah, and um, you might be able to guess by the shape. I guess I, I maybe. What I think, I'm thinking probably. An action figure of sorts. But, you know, I love love action figures. So, as I just guessed it, most likely an action figure. But to paint the picture here, we've got some very nice Spider-Man wrapping paper. And not only is it Spider-Man wrapping paper, but it is, in fact, Christmas themed. Mm-hmm. And it's wonderful. Some snowflakes. Some snowflakes. A uh, nice blue background, you know, with some uh, some dots for more snowflakes. And then... Spider-Man doing his various wonderful Spider-Man poses. I especially love this one. That's my favorite. The jump with kind of the... Yeah, his feet are kind of like together. Yeah. His arms are straight up. That's my favorite Spider-Man pose. I love it. It looks. It always looks so cool. So, let's see what, what figure we got here. Does the wrapping paper have a clue as to which... Hmm. figure is enclosed hmm, hmm, I, I don't know say, because I maybe have an idea but we'll see here it is spider Gwen just as I thought what a wonderful gift this is the uh, Marvel Legends series uh, it's got Spider-Man Edge of Spider-Verse you know I love this don't get me wrong The one thing that just bothers the shit out of me about the Marvel Legends series. Mm -hmm. They're great figures. I've got Spider-Gwen here, and she has uh, an alternate head of just Gwen Stacy unmasked. And then it looks like uh, kind of a hood down version that goes underneath the uh, Spider-Gwen head. It kills me that these secondary characters that they have it does it doesn't just say their name i know i don't i don't get that i don't i don't understand it you've got you know marvel legend series at the top here and then down at the bottom it says marvel spider-man and then in a red bar across the bottom of the box instead of just saying spider gwen it says edge of spider-verse and this is not the only figure that does this because like you said it's it's pretty much all the secondary characters yeah like uh you you've got um 
Oh gosh, I can't even. I can't even think now. Like under uh, who? Which? What is? What is this character? I can't remember her name. Um, this oh. is a problem. See, yeah, she's a secondary not, character. Listed. But you, it's just okay. 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 You've got Morbius. Yeah, Morbius, the living vampire, has a Marvel Legends figure, and it's part of this series because they release what one two three four five six seven figures at a time in a series and then you get stuff to make a bigger figure but morbius here the living vampire if you were to purchase his figure on his little title bar it would say villains of the night not morbius morbius the living vampire like whose call is that (laughs) Where they're just like, well, they don't need the name on there. Just put the series. Yeah. But your main characters, Spider-Man and Venom, it says Venom underneath Venom. Because everyone needs to know who Venom is. But nobody needs to know who Spider-Gwen or Morbius or this is a Boomerang, I think. No one needs to know who Boomerang (laughs) is. Ridiculous. However, I love this figure. This is wonderful. I was... Everywhere I went, I was always scoping for that. And I really? Finally found one. Yeah, I was too. <laughs> every it seemed, time it seemed like they'd have every other, sometimes multiple series. Yeah, and like every figure from both, but that was just never yeah anywhere to be found. The Spider Gwen figure was pretty difficult. Yeah, there for a bit. So well, this is awesome. Very cool. Now, are you? Um, do you plan on removing it from the package, or will that be uh, kept in the box? Not sure. Because, you know, I took the ones I have out of the box. Well, I have the Kylo Ren that you gave me, mm-hmm. the Black Series, and then also the Sand Trooper that you gave me from the Black Series. Those are still in their boxes. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, when I, you know, when I bought Captain Phasma, I removed her from the box. Kept the box, mm-hmm. but I removed her. Um, I've been taking my pop vinyls out of their boxes. I don't know. I might leave her, might leave her in there. Depends. I know I'm getting from Lindsay because I purchased them myself, but I'm getting the Saga figures for Christmas from her. Those are definitely going to stay in the box, I think, unfortunately, because I want to play with them really bad or at least display them, but they are not coming out. Should I tell you a secret? Yeah. I bought you those, too. Did you really? And then you told me that you went out and got them yourself. Oh and I was like, well... Did you return them? No, they're, they're still up in the attic. You should keep them for yourself. I was thinking about it. You should. You already bought them. I know. What are you going to do? Where where'd you buy them from? Nostalgia? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was like right after I told you. And then... Or I told you that I had seen them there. Uh-huh. And I was hoping your reaction would be like, oh... that's funny yeah but then then you ended up getting them elsewhere well it's 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 only because i probably wouldn't have but it's only because Lindsay and i had talked about it for my birthday Mm -hmm. and it was already discussed like hey will you buy me these and she had already said yes so when they showed up in person and the only reason we didn't for our birthday is because shipping from skybound.com was fucking insane. Yeah. So when they showed up at Nostalgia, I, I went right to her and I was like, hey, Nick saw these at Nostalgia. If I go check and they're still there, like, can I hold a pair? Mm-hmm. And she was like, yeah, that's fine. But if you still have them, you should keep them because they're nice figures. Yeah, I was thinking about it. I probably will. Hopefully that's not douchey. Why would it be douchey? I don't know. I know I'm getting them. I like, know. it's not a big deal. I know. You should. You should keep them. That way we can both have them. Yeah. I kept the, uh, well, of course, I got what I meant was I I bought the other Skybound figure, the uh, Kyle Barnes. Yeah. Which is really cool. Yeah, I saw another past. one of those at Did Nostalgia. You? I wanted to pick it up, but I didn't. I don't have any money. I spent too much on movies lately. Which is fine. Yeah. Need those movies. Yeah. So, there's our gift exchange. Yeah. So, thank you very much for these 
lovely, lovely items. Yes, thank you for this wonderful figure. Yeah, absolutely. I'm hoping, I'm really, really hoping. Fingers crossed I'll get the uh, Scream Factory Special Edition, or Ultimate Edition Child's Play for Christmas from uh, someone in Lindsay's family, and I'll have a nice NECA Chucky doll, too. It's nice, you know, it's always really nice to get action figures, mm -hmm. because it's something that I really love, but I don't like spending money on. Yeah, I'm the same way. There are few and far between that I actually will buy for myself now. Yeah. And I buy a shit ton for Lazarus. Yeah. He's going to play with him. Exactly. You know? For me, it's like, I don't know, I've, I've got a, a nice collection at the moment, so mm -hmm. I don't want to, like, overcrowd yeah. my, my room here. So it's like something that I feel like I really need, I'll go for it, but, you know... I think the the newest figures I got were the Walking Dead, the three up there. Oh, yeah. I got a Rick, a Michonne, and a Daryl. But. Yeah. I, uh, I, you know, and I'm very, I'm very exclusive when it comes to pop vinyls as well. Because mm -hmm. I feel like they're the new Beanie Babies. And yeah, you can not just even go the crazy new, on those. Not even the new Beanie Babies. They are the Beanie Babies, and they have been for a long time, and they are still being released, and... I'm not going to lie, you know, they're starting to get into very interesting territory, character-wise. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of characters that would be really nice to have. And they're finally, they're finally starting to kind of move away from your core characters. Yeah. You know, they don't have six versions of Iron Man. Mm -hmm. They've got, you know, there's a new Iron Man for the Civil War, but they've also got... Quicksilver and a Silver Surfer and a Cable and you know I think there's a there might even be a Bishop uh, pop vinyl but just very nice yeah off kilter characters um, so it's it's starting to be like oh they're getting some characters I want to buy mm -hmm. but I've been I've held back enough to only be I've only purchased the uh, My Chemical Romance, the Gerard Way pops, which I found uh, a Hot Topic exclusive Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge pop vinyl in the wild at Hot Topic. Ooh. So I bought one of those. Now I only need the Black Parade uh, skull faced Gerard. And that's the that's unfortunately that's the last for the series. That's it. There's only four of them. Mm. But goddamn, do I need them? Would, I don't know. Did they do? Um, did they do anything from Danger Days? No, but that would have been awesome. That seems like it would have been cool. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so there's those four, and I don't know. Apparently, they're coming out with Last of Us pop vinyls, and I'm like, yep. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll get those. Yeah, I'll get those for show. I do really want to pick up a lot of the horror. Uh, monsters too. Lindsay has a leather face that I bought for her. That's really cool. And luckily, I you know the horror ones were kind of early on, yeah. oddly enough. And uh, but with the recent opening of Fye in the Dayton Mall and stuff, I'm starting to see the horror characters mm -hmm. a lot more. So you know they have a ghost face and a Sam from Trick or Treat and. Chucky and Michael Myers and Leatherface, obviously, and Hellraiser and Freddy. And, yeah. You know, start. I have a Jason, which is cool because I have it from episode. From episode. Uh, Jason Part 5 mm -hmm. with the blue, and he's got blue on his mask, which is sweet. But that was a gift, so. I'd like to see some Metal Gear at yeah. some point, but. I don't doubt it. I'm sure they'd get into it sometime. They, uh, I've seen Metal Gear figures from, have you ever seen the, I think they're called Nendroids? Y yes, no, They're yes. like little cutesy anime looking characters uh -huh. or designs, but they do a lot of video game stuff and a lot of stuff from mangas and, and animes. Uh huh. Uh, they're smaller than pop vinyls, but they're pretty cool. They usually come with like accessories and... yeah other knickknacks 
but I've not seen any from from Pop. And also, I still hope that Bethesda just releases a full line of the actual figures from from Doom, like all the collectibles that you would have oh found. God, those if they would just so release cool. all of those, like the way they look in the game, yeah, like that exactly. size. They need to be they need to be modified Mighty Mugs. Do you remember Mighty Mugs? Mm -mm. Mighty Mugs look exactly like the collectibles from Bethesda from from Doom. Yeah, uh, their hands are like Lego hands, mm -hmm. um, and they had like the big heads and like smaller bodies, and they were vinyl figures. Um, Butch has a bunch of them in his booth at the shop. He's got Boba Fett and Darth Maul, and I think a Chewbacca. Mm. They're called Mighty Mugs. Next time you're at the shop, take a look at them. They're not. They're not exact because these ones kind of stand with their arms out. Yeah. And I know the ones in Doom were more straight down like a traditional action figure. Mm -hmm. um, these ones were a little bit spread more. Their legs are kind of spread and then their yeah. arms are sort of curved like this in a C. Mm -hmm. um, but if those figures were modified to where the helmet looked like Doom and everything, that would be excellent, excellent, excellent. Those are so cool. Yeah. And they just, the pop figures just aren't, they don't like satisfy no. what you want out of those particular, you know, figures from, from that game. Right. Because they have a very particular look to them. Yeah. They're so, so cool. Yeah. I think they've got like, they might have released one of the, the Doom Space Marines. And I like think you can't the, get a Space Marine as a pop. Yeah, I've seen them in the pop, and they also make like the little blind boxes. Yeah. I've seen them in that, which is, looks closer to the way they look in the game, but, yes. you know, they're Real tight. two inches or so, you know. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Even pops are kind of pushing it for me, being at like three and a half inches or whatever they mm -hmm. are. They're nice and everything, and, you know, but... And I, I do want, I do want a lot of the the horror characters and obviously I'm trying to collect all the Gerard Way characters. Yeah. But I don't have any anybody from Marvel yet. I think I I don't think I'd buy anybody from Marvel unless it was Moon Knight. Which I'd lo I'd love to see a Moon Knight pop vinyl. Mm -hmm. Hot Topic has an anti venom. Mm. That's pretty cool. It's an exclusive. I might get a Carnage too, but there's so many Deadpools, like, I don't even want Deadpool, because yeah. there's just a buttload of them. If I'm going to buy a Deadpool pop vinyl, it's going to be the taco truck one. Uh, well, do you want to go over uh, Black Christmas at all? Yeah, we can talk about Black Christmas. So, okay, then we should preface it by saying we both just watched this movie. We did. We, as, as I said earlier... Um, this weekend, so, you know, the Saturday after this cast comes out, which hopefully it'll go up, you know, tonight and be available tomorrow, because we're recording on Thursday, which is yeah. the new night. Ha ha ha. Mm. Hot and fresh. Mm -hmm. Um, so we were going to do a Black Christmas double feature. So in, in preparation, um, I purchased both the Black Christmas remake and the Scream Factory Blu-ray collector's edition of the original Black Christmas from 1979. I think. 78 or 79. It's fucking early. It's an early one. Um, and uh, within the last week, I would say, we have both seen this movie for the first time. The original. Yeah. Yeah. Which I had never seen either before. You had seen the remake. Only, only right? um recently only after i bought it okay when we went to suncoast yeah and i picked it up i think mm -hmm. that was watching it like that night was the first time i'd seen it okay so i did watch it a couple weeks uh probably early december mm -hmm. um so we're we were approaching the original from slightly different perspectives because you saw the remake first i did and i watched the original first yeah so my my horror and shock and disappointment yeah <laughs> when i watched the the remake might have been a bit more um uh dramatic than whatever you felt when you watched it because probably 
because I, I loved the original and it's like, holy shit, this is fucking amazing. It's really good, you yeah. know. I wasn't expecting that at all. I, I figured it was going to be like just a generic slasher from uh -huh. the, the time it came out where you have like piss poor acting and a bunch of like schlocky looking effects <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a shit story. Yeah. But it was it was scary. Mm -hmm. The mood was like really eerie. Um, the way it looked was great. You know, it looked like a real movie. Yeah, is is something that uh, that comes to mind when I think about it. You know, it's it didn't... even with the the Scream Factory remaster, mm -hmm. it still kind of like retains that grit yeah. of of old. You know that early. 70s 80s horror um and it i mean it looks gorgeous now with the restoration mm -hmm. but again even with that it's still just like feels dirty yeah in like a great great way and i don't know if you uh did you watch any of the extras not yet no, no. i watched like three of the featurettes uh-huh and uh so that kind of as they normally do when you when you sit down and watch the the extras kind of deepens your appreciation for it yeah and um you know just a really really solid movie you know it's it's tough to even like classify it as a slasher even though that's what people kind of say it is well it's because it's there's not much slashing going on you no. don't really see that much uh violence in general no not at all it's it really takes the uh well, I don't know if it takes the Texas Chainsaw Massacre approach, because I don't know if it came out before or after, but it's comparable to yeah. the Texas Chainsaw Massacre because there is not a lot of gore. I believe there's really only one scene mm -hmm. that has any blood at all. Um, In Black Christmas? Yeah. Yeah. Really, really just there's the one uh, kill with the unicorn. And that's still, like, suggestive. Yeah. You don't see it, like going in or anything yeah and you don't see the aftermath of that either mm -hmm. you don't see the body afterwards all covered in blood or anything no there's a uh, like near the end when you get like the chase going on i think uh what's her name she busts into that bedroom where there are a couple of dead oh, bodies oh yeah think, but you don't yeah. they still don't look like mutilated yeah you it's know. uh but so so you can set the stage here for Black Christmas. Yeah. Um, it starts out in a sorority house. And uh, I believe it's it's near Christmas, at least. It's not, not necessarily Christmas Eve or anything like that. But uh, it's the beginning of at least Christmas break. And uh, the girls are kind of partying. And some of them are getting ready to go home for the holidays and things like that. Well, this sorority is uh being continually prank called and god damn these calls for a movie that came out in 1979 this movie is vulgar and exploitative and uh god visceral yeah really i mean in the dialogue and the way it looks i think visceral is like one of the best ways to describe this film because the the girls pick up this phone call and uh there's just a dude yelling like i'm gonna fuck your cunt on it not i did not expect it i didn't either i did not expect that kind of like language to come out of a movie from this era oh shit it was it was 74 really yeah i'm way off so i guess that that would have uh I'm pretty sure that means it would have been before Texas Chainsaw. Yeah, it must have been. But yeah, the uh, the language during the the phone call, phone calls, and um, and also the reaction to the phone calls. Does it have a specific date for Texas Chainsaw or for Black Christmas? Because Texas Chainsaw is seventy four as well. Oh wow. No, I don't see an official date. So, well, well then chances are that they were 
they were both just uh, they just so happened to be very similar. Right. Well, Texas approach. Chainsaw came out on October first, okay. but even still, within a year, you're right. It's it's they, they took have, similar approaches. Yeah. They wouldn't have really taken influence from one another. Yeah. But uh, yes, these these phone calls, um, just insane rambling. Yeah. The voice changes. Mm-hmm. You know. It's uh, it's very creepy, and on one of the featurettes, uh, several people kind of talk about how intense the uh, the guy was with his you know recording of those calls. Really? Yeah, just like <clears throat> I, I'm fairly certain he did like more voiceover work than actual you know acting. I don't know if the guy actually appears in the movie. I don't think it's the same guy who. Who you see uh-huh. as the killer. Barely. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So, so, yeah, so, um, they're all kind of getting ready to, to go home for Christmas, and, uh, one of the sorority sisters goes missing, mm-hmm. and there's kind of, um, an effort made to track her down. Her father shows up. To the sorority house and uh, has some pretty interesting exchanges with like the house mother, Mrs. Mac. Yeah. She was my favorite character, yeah. easily. Just like literally every scene that Mrs. Mac is in, she's pulling a hidden bottle of alcohol out yeah. of somewhere. <laughs> yeah, she's out of got a all Bible, these... out of the back of the toilet, yeah, out of a shoebox in one of the girls' rooms. They're like, stashed all over the house, everywhere, and it's amazing. Yeah. It's so funny. But, uh, so, yeah, so, uh, I can't, I can't remember her name, maybe Grace, I feel like. Is it Grace and then her father, or Claire? Claire, yeah, it was the girl who was missing. Claire Claire goes missing and her father shows up and a lot of the movie is really, is kind of based around, like, what happened to Claire. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they, you know, they kind of search for her, um, they find, there's a, there's a, another big search party because there's a young girl that's missing as well um and they find this other young girl who's like 13 they find her dead in a park um and then everybody kind of gets confined to the house um and during this ongoing search for claire uh you know the killer is kind of just stalking yeah. There's not a lot of killing really. No, it's, it's I mean it's it's very cerebral. Yeah. You know, more than like as we said before, there's no gore. You see a little bit of blood. Uh-huh. But all of the all the scenes where people are dying, you kind of are left to your own devices to imagine what's happening. Yeah. But that it's done in a way where it's still very creepy. Uh-huh. You know they're not necessarily saving you by not showing you. It's almost like it, it, it makes it more impactful in a way. Right. Um, so during this, again, during this big search for uh, Claire, there's a couple subplots that arise. One being that they do go to the police and uh, the police eventually, after much convincing, decide to tap their phone. So for a while throughout the movie you have the, the calls are continuing and they're like rising in intensity almost every time which is kind of hard to believe because they start out fucking intense um but there's a subplot where they're they're trying to catch him on the phone and trying to trace the call exactly trying to trace the call and you've got the girl um god i can't remember her name uh she was like the british chick mm-hmm the main character, yeah. basically. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to call her Victoria. That's not her name, but that's what we're going to call her for the purpose of this. Yeah, do you have your nose? Yeah, I do have my... Um, so the killer is... Continues to call, and she continues to answer and tries to keep him on the phone, but a couple times she hangs up like an idiot. Uh, but then you've also got another subplot with Victoria, until we figure out her real name, and her boyfriend, Pete... And, uh, she goes to Pete and, uh, tells him that she is pregnant 
and not only does she tell him she's pregnant, but also she tells him that she is getting an abortion and there's nothing he can do about it, which I feel like is a hugely controversial thing in 1974. Yeah. For not only for a woman to say she's going to have an abortion, but to be like, this is happening and whatever you do is not going to stop me because I still ha- have things I want to do with my life and yeah. I still want to graduate college and I still want to travel and blah, blah, blah. I'm not having this baby. Yeah. And it's very interesting. And as I said, I feel like it would have been very controversial in 1974. Mm-hmm. Um, she does it. And yeah. it's, I mean, she doesn't have the abortion in the film. They don't show that. It's not that crazy. No. <laughs> but... It's it's a running subplot between her and her boyfriend because her boyfriend is very much... Her name was Jess. Jess. Her boyfriend, Pete, is very much trying to change her mind. Yeah. Um, which, he kind of starts to lose it a little bit over that whole, that whole thing that's yeah. happening. And he kills a piano. <laughs> you do see a piano get killed. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> that was my favorite part. So, you're, you're kind of... Um, they're kind of pushing you to believe that he might be the one who's lost it yeah. and is is the one behind all these calls and stalking the girls at the sorority house. Um, so, um, I'm trying to think where we go from there. Uh, he shows up at the house yeah. at, uh, at a point where the police are coming in, I believe. He's leaving, He's leaving as the police are coming in. Yeah. And they kind of, I think they, they seem somewhat suspicious of him, but, but there's not like, you know, they don't confront him or anything. Not then. No. They try to get it out of Jess. You know, yeah. they try to say, hey, what's, what's this story? What's going on here? And she kind of hesitates and, you know, just gives him a little bit. and Gives him a little bit, uh, not too much to give pete like an alibi yeah she gives them enough to be like don't worry about it but they still kind of worry about it Mm -hmm. um and then you you kind of uh well i feel like since we're talking about the police the uh the scene with the fellatio (laughs) the new call sign (laughs) yeah yeah fellatio yeah that was hilarious. Yeah. You know, um, the lieutenant in the movie is plays um, Nancy's father in Not Round Elm Street, yeah. John Saxon. Pretty much like the same character. Literally, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's really good in this movie, though. Yeah. And, and having him in it kind of, I think, uh, gives it more legitimacy. It does. You know? It kind of brings just a slight tinge of notoriety to it, like... You know, he was a big actor in the 70s and 80s. Obviously, as I said, he was in Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, he also, I learned, you know, from watching the contamination bonuses that he was one of those actors that did a lot of Italian uh, horror movies, you know, because oh, really? he thought that, like, not necessarily <laughs> he legitimately thought, but normally the purpose of an American actor doing an Italian horror film was. Because they got to star, yeah, and they they were hoping that starring in a movie they could add it to their credits, which would mm-hmm. then get their get them better roles in America. Mm-hmm. But they mentioned John Saxon by name oh. in the documentary for Contamination. Yeah, an interesting thing about the the character he played in Black Christmas was it was originally um, there was a guy named Edmund O'Brien who was cast in the role of Lieutenant. Ken Fuller, which is the character Saxon ends up playing, and uh, he got there to start filming, and like got off his plane and didn't know where he was, and they had to like pick him up from the airport and like take him back to his hotel, and he like couldn't remember his name, and they had to like they figured oh maybe he's like really jet lagged, <laughs> you know he's kind of old so maybe he needs to rest, and it turns out the guy had Alzheimer's. And his agent, oh like, sent him out to do this movie, knowing that he was sick. And, Jesus. And he was, like, going to try to do it still. Like, they said that once he 
he kind of could string things together. He could he could remember some lines uh-huh. and like snap back into it for a few minutes, you know, for a take. But then it became apparent, you know, like we can't we can't do this for an entire oh my movie. God. And they had to like send him home and and that's where they got Saxon like the last minute uh-huh. he came in and did it and um somehow that dude actually made another movie. Like he didn't stop after Black Christmas. Oh he, my god. He went and, and he starred in, in one more movie before he uh he called it quits. <laughs> that's so, ridiculous. Yeah. So But um, you know, with all that we've said so far, I don't really feel like we can talk more about the plot because that kind of yeah. After that, you really kind of get to because spoiler it's, territory. Because it's a big, it's a big who done it yeah. type of thing. You know, you're trying to figure it out throughout the whole movie. And it's you know it's it's not a slow mover either. It's pretty fast paced. Like it's a, I would say it's a great thriller. Yeah. You know, I I I think it falls more into the horror genre than like Don't Breathe. Yeah, I agree. But it is definitely a more of a mystery thriller. Um, kind of along the same lines, completely different premise, but kind of on the same lines as the changeling Mm -hmm. where like it's billed as a horror movie, but you're really, it's a mystery, you know? Um, it's really great. I mean, I I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Not your typical, um, slasher when you think of that. And, And like I said, people, people call it a slasher and they'll say it's like one of the first, but Again, I have trouble even viewing it that way. Yeah. Just because it's... No one really gets slashed. (laughs) You know? So, uh, very, very good. Definitely worth checking out. Worth watching. The remake, I cannot say that about. Yeah. Well, let me take this call and we're going to talk about the remake. Okay. Hey, baby. What's up? Oh, okay. Well, Nick and I are doing the podcast. That's where I am. That's okay. No big deal. But um, we are just talking about movies, so I will uh, call you when I'm when I'm all done. Okay. All right. It's all right. I love you. Bye. So the remake of Black Christmas. Comparatively, you know, after I saw it, because like I said, guys, I did watch the remake first, Mm -hmm. and then I watched the original, and it wasn't until I watched the original that I realized what a big steaming pile of garbage (laughs) the remake is. Because you're, when I was talking to you about it, your, your reaction at that point before you had seen the original was like, well, it's like, you know, just kind of a silly, put it on the background for like you know, crazy kills and, is, and whatever. Yeah. <sighs> like, you want to talk about unnecessary. Oh, yeah. Just... Completely. Like, seriously, I'm not one of these people who's, like, so... Um, about, like, the integrity of originals. I don't think they should ever be re- remade or, you know... You ruin the integrity of the first one by making a second or, or rebooting it. But it's just like, it feels wrong when you watch watch the remake. Yeah. Because it's like, they miss the mark. They totally, they totally miss the mark on, like, what made the original unique. Yeah. What made it good and worth watching. You know, the essence of the original is completely gone. You know, there's, it's, it's very loosely... Um, I guess it's very loosely the same as far as like the setup being at a sorority house and, right. and some the characters' names uh, being carried over to the remake. Yeah, the killer being called Billy. Right. You know. I uh, and it's weird because you can. I feel like you can compare the Black Christmas remake. Um, story-wise, and the direction they went, you can almost compare it to Rob Zombie's Halloween. A lot of people complain that, and we've been over this on past podcasts, but a lot of people complain that Rob Zombie's Halloween 
compromises the integrity of the original because it gives you Michael Myers' backstory. And for on Halloween, I personally disagree. I'm like, I don't care. Mm-hmm. I like the backstory that Rob Zombie gives him, and I th- I think you it it's it. I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't kill Michael Myers for me. It yeah. doesn't ruin Michael Myers for me. This one, however, kind of takes the same approach, where they give you a backstory on Billy, and that mm-hmm. takes up, you know, not a significant portion, but part of the movie. They they elaborate. Well, this happened to Billy, and then this happened to Billy, and then this happened to Billy, and they do it a couple times throughout the movie, and the whole time. You know, when I watched the first time, I was like, fine, whatever. That's cool. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't care. When you watch the original and then you consider what they did to Billy in the remake, you're just, you are, you're like completely unnecessary. Yeah. I didn't need any of that. You completely ruined this Billy killer for me by telling me what happens to him. And I don't don't give a shit about spoiling the remake because it's so fucking bad. It is bad. Like, the ending is so absurd when there's one, there, like, the climax, you've got a point where um, it turns out that Billy and, um, what's the the girl's name? Um, I, I watched it weeks ago, I don't okay. remember. Well, it was Agnes. Oh, the big tall girl. Yeah. Yeah. Like the other, the second killer, I guess, right? I don't think she's the second. Is she the second killer? Hey, by the way, there's a second killer in Black Christmas, too. Like, that chick, remember? But was she the girl at the beginning who is like super... Oh, no, she gets killed. Remember there's the girl at the very beginning who's, like, super fucking weird. Um, the main the main girl goes up to her. Yeah, because I thought she was going to be yeah. the killer in the movie. No, I remember the other Agnes, the other killer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Okay, so her and Billy yes. are both, like, in the wall. Yes. They're climbing up. They're, they're climbing up after, like, the main chick. Uh, is her name Jess in this movie? I don't fucking remember. Hmm. It might be. It sucks so bad. The the final girl in this film. So the two killers are climbing inside the wall. Up and down. She's like, the the survivor girl's caught in the middle. Yeah. They're going up and down. Okay. And then they both end up getting, like, crushed. Yeah. Something falls down on top of them. Yeah. And they both end up falling, whatever, several several levels down uh, to the bottom of this house inside the wall and then there's like an explosion and they you would assume are just fucking burned to death yeah and then their bodies are recovered and taken to the morgue and no they're not dead yeah somehow like they missed that and they're like in the ceiling of the hospital too yeah it's like and then the the very ending where he fucking falls over the guardrail and like is impaled by a Christmas tree. Yeah. It's just, just it's just a shit show of a movie. Like really I can't is. even formulate coherent thoughts. On it. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it was one of those where like I was watching it and you know, it was the visual equivalent of in one ear out the other. Yeah. It was like I I saw what was happening, but I was not retaining because it's like this is so fucking awful. I had just watched the original, like, earlier that afternoon. Uh-huh. And so then I watched the, the remake directly after it, and I think that really hammered home <laughs> how fucking awful it was, because, you know, I, I, I like to be as open-minded and forgiving as possible. Yeah. When you do a remake, especially of a classic, you know, I know people are going to be overly critical. I'm not being overly critical. We're not being overly critical. The, the remake is just so awful especially when you compare it to what it was trying to uh accomplish right you know it just just 
I well, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to compare that particular part to the original because I don't want to give it away. But, but again, like we said, you know, giving Billy this backstory, and uh, should, I, should we tell him the real fucked up thing in the backstory? Oh yeah, sure. So you know, spoiler alert. If you don't want to listen, close your ears or whatever. But where the the Black Christmas remake really takes a fucking left turn is that there's two killers in the movie, Billy and his his uh, sister daughter, because Billy's mom is trying to have sex with her husband, but he passes out drunk. So the mom goes and bangs Billy, and he gets her pregnant, and then she gives birth to, like, a fucked up... That's Agnes. Agnes, yeah. That's your second killer. And I'm fairly certain, I can't be sure, but I it looks like the actor that plays Billy in the movie also plays Agnes. Oh, because Agnes right. does not look like a woman. It looks like a man with fake hair. I just had it pulled up on IMDb. She does not look feminine in the least. I don't think. But that's that's where it's just like that was a completely unnecessary plot point. None of that is in the original, by the None way. Of that's it. not gonna spoil anything. It's just that's that's not part of what makes the original good. There's no right. like that's incest. not a spoil. That is the left turn that the new that the remake takes for what like I don't even know why it's like for whatever reason they're just like hey how about we have Billy's mom bang him and he gets her pregnant and gives birth to his sister daughter it's ridiculous well it looks like Agnes was played by a fellow named Dean Friss well at least it was a man it wasn't the guy who played Billy but it was it was a man, and he was only in one other. He was in Tower Prep, played Tunnel Man, Tunnel Man, two episodes. But other than that, he's like he's a camera operator. Oh, who's worked on a lot of stuff. Yeah, he's got like fifty credits. Dang. Most recently, Bates Motel and the X Files. So I mean, he's. I don't know how you go from. <laughs> operating the camera to like hey do you want to play uh the incestuous spawn of (laughs) billy and his mother in the black christmas remake yeah well well i guess so (laughs) um yeah so it's just it's a shit show and if you like shit shows if you like splatter slashers it's a splatter slasher. I mean, fucking... They don't hold back on the gore. If you like getting pissed off... Yeah. ...watching horror movies sometimes. Definitely. I mean... As coming from a place that where I watched it first... I would say, you know, don't not watch it. But if you're going to... Watch the original first... And then give yourself some time. Like... Give it a week could, or so. I think you could have some fun making a double feature out of it. Yeah, you could. Because you will be... I, I feel like you'll... Your what-the-fuck level will be increased yeah. if you watch them back-to-back. That's true. That's true. Because you take all of the subtlety and the finesse of the original and just, like, fucking burn it, throw it in a fucking landfill and set it on fire, and then piss on it you know that's that's what they did it it doesn't make sense i don't know what they were trying to do i don't either i don't know like who had the idea if they were a fan of the original like whoever wanted to remake it or if they just like knew like hey there was this christmas movie that they made in the 70s we should just like take the name and And modernize it yeah slap it on this because other... it doesn't seem like it was made by a fan of the original. No, I don't think so. It would have... I don't know. Because it just doesn't... It does not. It does nothing to preserve the integrity of the original. Whereas, like, the Texas Chainsaw remake with Jessica Biel does it fantastically, I yeah. think. Mm-hmm. I mean... Even I th- the, new, the new Friday the 13th 
I thought was really oh, good. Oh yeah, the new Friday the Thirteenth is absolutely awesome for that for that purpose because the new Friday the Thirteenth sets out to do exactly what the original ones did and it does it. Mm-hmm. You know, so does Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It effectively modernizes the 1974 version black christmas too much weird sex stuff Mm -hmm. and not enough atmosphere and too much just slasher gore which i'm not opposed to it i'm just saying comparatively it's too much the new nightmare on elm street too much unnecessary sex stuff too much unnecessary just like ridiculous gore although the nightmare movies are somewhat known for that you know there's a way to do it properly and some movies get it right and black christmas fucking gets it wrong hardcore so or black (laughs) xmas if you're so inclined yeah so watch it but don't expect good things no know what you're getting into but we highly recommend the original black christmas like I said, especially recommend the Scream Factory edition. Once again, the restoration is beautiful. I haven't seen like an original original uh, yeah. version of it, but I do know that. I'm, well, I mean, you, I'm sure you saw it too. But the the restoration preserves the original audio track at least. Mm-hmm. Um, so you get you get the original track which you know includes like the phone calls and things so it's really interesting to hear these crazy ass phone calls and know that that's what it sounded like yeah you know when you saw this movie in theaters in the 70s oh and we had uh we had talked about last week when we recorded uh, the jack frost episode of super scary which we'll we'll discuss soon but anyway i think i might have mentioned it then all of the snow in the Black Christmas original was, was fake. Yeah. You never notice it. No, you don't. You know, they did a good job making the set look real. The house was an actual, uh, like, historical home in Toronto. Oh, really? So it wasn't a movie set. It was all filmed, like, on location. That's rad. Which is cool. I always like when you find stuff like that out. Uh, um, wonder if we could go visit the house. I think you can. The house from Black Christmas. Because one of the uh, one of the featurettes, two of the actors meet up and go back to the house and they're oh, like really? walking around. Yeah. So. I wouldn't even want to go in. Like I just want to stand outside of it. You know, it's kind of like people that stand outside the Amityville house or yeah, whatever. Um. Oh, Margot Kidder was actually drunk in her scene where she's like totally embarrassing herself she ends up talking about like the turtles the turtles that fuck for three three days days. yeah she was drunk during that that's awesome yeah they said that they wanted her to be drunk which is she in other stuff because i feel like i recognize her yeah she played lois lane in the superman movies did she Uh uh-huh that's probably where from yeah was she in indiana jones the Raiders. Uh, they look. Alike. That might be a different woman. Who they was, look alike. Though. I think that la- that woman was in uh, Scrooge. Okay. Different lady, I believe. Okay. I can't remember her name though. Well. Uh, I liked that actress. Uh, that was Barb, right? Yeah. Yeah, I liked Barb. her. I liked her. I liked her role. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought she was funny. Yeah. So. But definitely, definitely check out some Black Christmas action. Some good stuff. Oh, boy. Um, I guess that probably about does it for this evening. Unless yeah. you had anything else. No. Uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up here for, th- for this evening. But uh, next week, since we're going to be starting new segments... Uh, Next week for Super Scary, uh, we'll probably bring you some Jack Frost action, and uh, also um, probably New Year's Evil, because that was on the docket Mm -hmm. as New Year's Eve is next weekend. Um, And then from there, we'll plan literally all of January and let you guys know what's going on. So that, we'll probably plan 
January's uh, lineup next week. I would assume maybe what we can do is the first episode for January or next episode we can do our year in review. That'd be good. Yeah. That would be appropriate. So maybe we'll we'll do we'll kind of cut down on Jack Frost and New Year's Evil and just give you brief overviews and then we'll do a year in review for Super Scary and Super Fanatics and that'll come next Thursday. Or do you think Friday would be better? No man, since we're only doing one. Yeah. The reason that we moved them, you know, we were going to move the shows all together to Thursday, Friday, and Saturday was those were like the best three days. To release That stuff. I could find. It seemed to... Market research showed that like releasing on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday was kind of optimal. Yeah. So if we're just doing one, maybe Friday would be a good time to send you off into the weekend... Yeah. With a podcast to listen to. And That'd be nice. I would say, though, if we're going to do Fridays, I would just try... I mean, it's not hard, mm-hmm. but I would just make sure to have it released earlier in the day. Because yeah, that's, then people, I wanted to do that. People have, will maybe get off work and listen to it before they go out for the evening. You know, yeah. that kind of a thing. Ideally, I think it's... I wanted to shoot for, like, between 11 and 3. Yeah. Having it just fully that's, uploaded. And, yeah, that midday, yeah, midday sort of sort of uh, window. Yeah. Window. Well, we can move it to Fridays. It's not like it's gonna really affect that much. That'll just mean this is day. this will be out on time. Yeah, yeah. That'll mean this will be out on time. So Super Divorce Supercast on its new night, Fridays. Friday. <laughs> <laughs> or its new its new day. Um, but yeah, next week. Super Divorce 2016 uh, year in review. And yeah, that about does it. I guess Merry Christmas, everybody. Hope you guys get lots of cool stuff. Yeah. Hope Sandy's good to you. We'll share some of our cool stuff next week, too. Yeah. Have a good, good episode lined up. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. All right, well, thanks for tuning in. And have a good one. Bye bye. Outro. Is it recording already? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to the outro of the uh, Super Horse Supercast here. We're uh, we're recording live on Instagram. So far, nobody's watching us record. We just talked about this in the intro, so we thought we'd try it out. But no one cares so far. That's all right. We're just going to do what we're doing here. And Instagram's like, hang on, we're telling more of your followers <laughs> to join your video. Like, it's okay, we're it's trying. Okay, just we're wait. trying really hard to get people to show up. Guys, guys, come over here, quick. Uh, yep. Yep. So. Yep. You want to go over social media? Spoof. Yeah. Um, as always, make sure that uh, if you haven't, that you do check us out on social media, all across social media. Twitter, we are at Super Divorce. Um, Instagram, at Super Divorce Band. Uh, we're over there on Facebook, at facebook.com slash Super Divorce. And you can also look up the Divorce Club on Facebook, where yeah. we just kind of uh, post articles, things that we find interesting and and try and uh, create a nice, fun, and lively atmosphere for everyone. Yeah, hopefully we get some good conversations going. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, you can also email us. Did you talk about the email? No, I did not. You can email us at divorceclub at superdivorce.com. Um, also, follow me on Instagram at benderbutt. Have you started your personal Instagram up again? Yes, I have. Um, I haven't. I've got it on my phone, but I haven't done anything with it yet. Oh, you know what? I lied. I did last week's music business quick tips on your personal. Yeah, on my personal. There you go. Yeah. So you you want to follow me on my personal? It's probably at Nicholas Villars, like it is on Twitter. Let's see for sure. You should change it to at Villars, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, it is Nicholas Villars.
Yeah. On Make Instagram it. and then also at Nicholas Villars on Twitter. Make it easy. Yep. So I don't have Twitter, so you know, fuck it. If you're a Twitter person, follow me. Still no one watching us, by the way. That's all right. <sighs> Disappointment. Disappointment. All right. Well, next week, as I said just a few minutes ago, is going to be our 2016 year in review for all of our shows. And uh, so we'll see you next Friday. So you guys have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas time. Yes, Merry Christmas. And Happy Hanukkah starts on Christmas Day. Hanukkah. My dad's Jewish. All the Hanukkah people out there, enjoy your Hanukkah. Yep. Yep. All right. Bye. Take care. Super divorce.